move on to this topic. This is Vanuti and the invisibility of translator, domestication, and foreignization. Okay, now what we have moved on classes, this is in terms of, and we are moving more to the current times because what Venuti contributed was, uh, he wrote, uh, is, was in 1998, which is almost like, uh, you know, the last uh, two years of 20th century. Now we are on the, almost begin with the two, two decades of 21st century are over. So it just, whatever, whatever Venuti talked about translation studies is something very, very, current and something very contemporary, what his policies and what, how he thought about what translation should be. So let's move on and see what was his contribution and what did he imply. So Venuti basically, um, his contribution was in terms of he brought about the element of culture and political agenda of translation. For him, this was very important, the cultural and political agenda of translation, that what does it entail? So he was worried, he was concerned about this, these things, that cultural element, that, that when the translation takes place, how should be it done? Because with translation, it entails you're translating from a source text to target text. It might be a literary writing, a novel, or others if you're it is. So each literary writing, a novel or short story, is a depiction of the culture of that source text. So when it is translated into the target text, what happens and what these, you know, uh, currently, you know, with Venuti and other linguists and other theorists were more concerned about, they uh, basically bracketed themselves under the broad heading of cultural theorists, that for them culture was very important, that when you as a translator embark upon the process of translation, what are you supposed to do with the culture of the source language? Usko kaise aapne translate karna, so retain karna hai, or it has to be changed or whatever. And, so, and he thought that this was a very important, uh, you know, issue with which Venuti is dealing. So let's begin. So um, here we are going to concentrate on other research that deals with cultural difference and with the interface between the source culture and the foreign linking ideology and the dominant discourse to translation, uh, to translation strategies. So Venuti and other culture theorists, in particular Venuti talked about that how it should start with. Basically he focuses on, uh, you know, uh, on key areas of in which were of inferential work of Lawrence Venuti he basically talks about the invisibility of translation and the translator in Anglo-American culture. For him, this was very important that what is that and the translator who has to carry on the uh, job of a translation, how much, you know, uh, you know, the translators should be visible, his work uh, in that is, uh, should it be the reflection of his on in the translated version or uh, in all that. So his basically was talking about in very important terms in terms of translator in Anglo-American culture. And then he talks about these two very important terms, what he calls them domesticating and foreignization. Domestication and foreignization, according to Venuti, they are very important terms which are available, uh, which is, uh, they are available or they're like strategies which a translator would like to use. So this is what we are going to focus upon and see that how Venuti addresses this. So Venuti, the cultural and political agenda of translation. Like other cultural theorists, Venuti insists that the scope of translation studies needs to be broadened to take account of value-driven nature of the socio-cultural framework. So he says that like other, when other theorists who was working, it's very important uh, it, that the scope of this translation studies uh, as it is, it needs, we need to broaden it and need to take account of, uh, you know, this, uh, this somebody wants to join of value driven uh, you know nature and that means what is important is that according to Venuti, culture and society as you know they're linked together we talked about it in sociolinguistics as well in the effect of society upon culture and vice versa and it is uh, you know uh, society on on society on language and and vice versa that is effect of language and culture and all that and it's also in terms of, uh, should I say, literature as well. That when it is something is written, it's a depiction of not only that particular era, it's a depiction of that culture, cultural values, society and all that. So for Venuti, this thing was had of immense scope in translation studies that how to take this particular vision as well on board. When translators embark upon the process of translation, ki unko very important value-driven nature of what is social cultural framework where that particular text which has to be translated, kis social framework mein wo likha gaya, 
a short story or something and when it is been translated into the target language how to carry on um, in the, uh, you know how to translate it that's become a very important role of the translator so in addition to government and other politically motivated institutions which may decide to censor or promote certain works Venuti refers to the various players in the publishing industry as well. She says that in addition to other, you know, we should say government and other uh, institutions which are involved and which decide to on which decide to censor or promote certain works, it is very important. We have to see that uh, uh, in this particular business and in this whole industry of translation, there are various players, according to Venuti, or should I say, various people involved in this publishing industry, because uh, you know. Here comes a very important link between translation and the publishing industry that after all, it's the publishers. The publishers play, play a very important role in terms of translation. Say, I'll give you an example. Any texts which are written here, say in Pakistani literature, written here in Pakistani language, say Urdu language, or in a, any text written in India, in Hindi language, or in Afghanistan, in, in Pashto language, that uh, source language text Say it is acceptable in uh, it's taken or acceptable in translating in UK or USA. So what happens is that in simple words it implies that it's not a very simple job that you want to get your Urdu book translated into English and published as well. Naturally, it's not translated. Translated is one job. If you are, it's your work is worth that. Uh, you know, it's it's a great scope. It has to be not only translated; it has to be published as well, because this is and then comes the roles of the decide who decides who censors or who promotes certain work. And Venuti refers, refers to all these players in this publishing industry is something very important. He talks about all these people in publishing industries in various, he talks them as people referring to them as various players in the publishing industry. So let's see who these various people are in the publishing industry. So these, according to Venuti, may include the literary agents, sales teams, and reviews. So he talks about is that when you get or send your book or written in Urdu language to be published in, in USA or, or UK, um, uh, in particular in USA, so it will entail a whole process in which there were so many players or so many people will be involved in this process. There will be the literary agents. Now, who would be the literary agents? Literally, agents agents would be the people who actually look at the manuscript and they feel that whether it's worth it to be translated, is there scope, hai, is there value, hai, is kitab ko aap pehle translate karai or then publish karai. Then there are the different sales teams because it amounts to a lot of financial financial issues as well. That you have to see the sales team ki agar kitab publish hoti hai, to marketing kaise hogi. So sales team and then becomes the role of the reviewer. So who are the reviewers, by the way, the reviewers? You're familiar with the term reviewers. Who are the reviewers of a book? Okay, I'm waiting for your answer plus reviewers. Okay, who are the reviewers? Yes. Is Asghar here or somebody else who would, who would answer my question? Actually, reviewers are the people who, when the book is published or something, they look up and then they see past comment, past judgment upon the work, that how well it is, how it has to be changed, just make your comments on it and something. So it is more like a critic or somebody wants to join, or somebody wants to join, uh, and then other people, uh, you know, would be involved in that. So how much these reviewers, they comment on it, that this, this book has to be translated, or the translate hogi, or if they are in the process of selection of a manuscript, the reviewers with the purple would see critically and examine, okay, is this book, is this material manuscript worth it? Is go translate kare or is go publish kare? Will it be accepted by the public? How well it will be received in the target audience who are likely to read and enjoy and that. So this is all these, these critical play, people play an important role. The literary agent, the sales team, reviewers, all of them, they read and receive, uh, and then once it is translated in the say target culture, how it is received there. So each of these players have a particular position and a role, and the translators themselves are part of that culture, which they can either accept or reject. So you say that when we talk about these players, we have to say that this is 
something very important that translators themselves they are they also become part of that culture hai, and then they can either accept or rebel against it uh, you know and this is that that means it's not only the literary agent the sales team reviewers who accept this project somebody wants to join it is also the translators themselves just may actually translate karna hai, who's been commissioned to translate will see to it that uh, will have immense uh, value uh, you know in terms of saying that he can accept or reject or say ki ye translation usne accept karni hai ya nahi karni okay so uh, let's move on and see that what vinuti had to talk in with this scenario in mind this background in mind uh, that what did what he had to say about his theory vinuti and the invisibility of the translator invisibility is a term used by vinuti to describe the translator situation an activity in contemporary anglo american culture vinuti sees the invisibility as follows now vinuti lord vinuti vinuti uh, as i told you that his contribution was in late 1998 that's like the end of 20th century so what his contribution was all in terms in terms of the anglo american culture by anglo american culture it implies that books now you see in the current times it's either books are published uh, these big publishing houses are situated either in usa or uk and they are the ones who accept who are willing to accept and you know especially so they are in the lookout for new uh, literature coming up emanating from from uh, you know former post colonial societies or from southeast asia or from asia because for them it is something new uh, something which you know their readers would be eager to read about any book written in say uh, talking about pakistani culture written in urdu language or any book for, uh, or any uh, book say in um, hindi and talks about indian culture or any book in written in afghanistan and depicts uh, afghanis afghani uh, culture afghanistan's culture written in pashto so uh, these uh, publishers they would be on the lookout to to see uh, which particular uh, transcript or which uh, manuscript they feel will be of immense value they should get it on get it published get it translated and published and all that so this we call as the american Amer uh, anglo american culture that it will be published in america in american english and how it will be accepted in american culture so here abinuti talks about the very important roles and he talks about the term invisibility by invisibility he is basically talking about actually the role of a trans translator because it's the translator who is going to actually translate these texts which i've given the examples like the pakistani novel or short or story written in urdu or or indian hindi written or so on so so they would be uh, you know the ones who would be septic then so it would be done in this way number 1 by the way translators themselves tend to translate fluently into english to produce an idiomatic and readable target text thus creating an illusion of transparency so uh, according to vinuti this is something very important he says by invisibility he means that uh, a term which is which he is using is in terms of describing that what would be the translator's situation when the translator is uh, translating it in the anglo american culture in the american culture but the term invisibility according to vinuti meant that the translator the translator one translator who translates fluently into english language probably american english and even so much so with so much perfection that even idiomatic expressions are translated into the source text into the target uh, sorry or uh, uh, idiomatic expressions of source text are translated into the target text and they are very much readable and they almost so close to the target text and the target language that it almost gives an illusion that it's it's transparent like you can see everything and you can as as if you can get the feeling that whatever the translator has presented it shows it looks just, it's just like it belongs to your own culture it belongs to your own because even the idiomatic expressions have been translated and if they are readable in the target text for the target audience and it is you know and they're done so in such a fluent manner this is what it means and the second way in which uh, you know vinuti talks about is the way the translated text is typically read in the target culture vinuti said that the translated text whether prose or poetry fiction or non fiction 
is judged or accepted by most publishers, reviewers, and readers when it fluently, when it reads fluently, when the absence of any linguistic or stylistic peculiarity makes it seem translated. He says the second thing is, by the way, these translated texts, which are typically read um, in, the in, the in the target culture, the example I gave you again is that any Pakistani uh, any book from uh, in from Pakistan written in Urdu language, any book written in Hindi from India, any text from say Bangladesh written in B Bengali language, or any other text from uh, Afghanistan written in Pashto language. So these books say uh, they would be kind of typically read uh, in the target culture. Target culture means say in the Anglo-American world in America, if these texts are translated and they will be read in the target country. According to Vinoti, he's asserting that a translated text, whether prose or poetry or fiction or non-fiction, is just acceptable by most publishers. So most of the publishers also, as I gave the example, they are based in US and UK. So these are the publishers based with big, huge publishing houses. It's a whole a big, a lot of you know financial uh, aspects are involved in it and they make a lot of you know revenue out of it so these both big publisher publishing houses they are in a business in itself so they are the ones who, who would be uh, 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 you know should i say making the decision to give prose do you know select here or a poetry or a fiction or a non prose they feel is it acceptable uh, will be acceptable by most publishers reviewers and readers um, and when it is published, should it be read fluently, that means translated in such a perfect manner that without any absence of any linguistic or stylistic, that when it is translated from source to target text in such a manner, there is no stylistic ambiguity, no linguistic, that means even in terms of language, everything is so perfect, in terms of style, it's so perfect. And it should be almost give the appearance as if, in other words, that the translation is not in fact a translation, but it's original. What to say? That's that's something amazing. That the way this translation is conducted is when from source language to target language, with all keeping in mind that there are no linguistic ambiguities or stylistic peculiarities, and when it is translated, it's in fact a translation, or it is done in such a in, in such a manner that it is it looks like original. Usme koi element aapko translation ka nahi lag It has been done in such a fluent manner, in such a perfect manner. That news linguistic or stylistic peculiarity doesn't exist. Mind you, it might be prose or poetry or fiction or whatever. So uh, overall, uh, this whole uh, aspect in terms of when it is presented in this manner, this is according to Vinuti. You know, it would be accepted. Um, uh, you know, in that if it is, it looks like original. So from here, Vinuti moves on and introduces us to his very two important, uh, should I say strategies or terms which he basically uses in um, uh, you know in domestication and foreignization now these are very important terms you should be thoroughly familiar with them and should you should be able to make a distinction in between them let me explain uh, each of them one by one because this is what is basically Venuti's contribution in the domain of translation studies when he talks about these two terms domestication and foreignization. Let's look at and see what Vinuti has to say. Vinuti discusses invisibility hand in hand with two types of translating strategy, domestication and foreignization. These strategies concern both the choice of text to translate and the translation method. So when Vinuti discusses these terms, in, you know, he discusses invisibility uh, term with hand in hand with two types of translating strategy and gives the name of domestication and foreignization. So he says that these strategies concern both the choice of text to translate and the translation method. He do not be focused on them. These, they concern both uh, the choice of the text which has to be translated and also the translation method. And these are like almost uh, of these strategies. Vinuti is giving his own strategies for translation and, the, and with, uh, concerned with these two terms, domestication and foreignization. And he also says that this would also focus on, on the choice of the text which has to be translated and also what translation method will be used. So let's look at these terms one by one. First, uh, let's see what is domestication. Venuti sees domestication as a dominating Anglo-American translation culture. 
to Vinuti, means this term, domestication, is like uh, he talks about a very important, as I say, Anglo-American word use karte hai, this is the scope of translation in America and USA, the, the Anglo-American strategy, that means American English and in America, as I said, most of the publishing houses are translated in America, in USA and in UK, and they are the ones, you know, where these books are, books from written from far-flung areas, from the third world countries, from South Asia, and other countries which are being translated and which are being published there, okay? So he says that, uh, as, because this is a very dominating, uh, you know, this term domestication, in particular, Vinuti demons the phenomenon of domestication, certain wars and ethnocentric reduction of the foreign text to Anglo-American target cultural values. Well, let me first of all make a distinction between these two, two terms so that there's no confusion. He says that uh, what Vinuti doesn't like is that when translation uh, is, uh, projects are conducted in America, what happens is that this basically as a policy involves that they somehow, uh, when uh, in, in this Anglo-American uh, uh, concept, they try to reduce the foreign text. By foreign text means, uh, you know, if uh, if Anglo America or America is the host uh, culture or the target uh, culture, uh, the foreign culture to them would be, as I give the example of Pakistani writings in Urdu language or Indian writers in Hindi language, and so on. So when these books, when you know Pakistani book or Indian book, to unke liye foreign text hai, which then is sent to um, America, somebody wants to join, wants to, to be, uh, to be uh, translated. What happens is that uh, naturally a Pakistani text, which is written in Urdu language, it will be an embodiment of Pakistan's culture, uh, you know, from wherever, which region it is talking about, its cultural values will, will be explicitly presented after you know, students of literature, you know that all literary, all writers tend to convey the spirit of the age and the culture and social values. They are all, you know, somehow reflected in the creative writings of the writers. So these dominant cultural values, as should, should I say, written in the source text when it is translated in the target language, uh, it it happens as a policy that in Anglo-American culture they try to reduce. Reduce. That means the foreign text ka jo ek foreign element hai, which reflects the foreign culture. Usko wo kuch, uh, they reduce it. Usko kam pesh karna chahte they wouldn't like to present it as it is. The hundred percent, the culture of Pakistani culture or Indian culture or Afghani culture. They would, they try to as a strategy us culture ko jab translate kiya jata hai American, uh, um, uh, you know, in uh, in Anglo-American tradition mein, they try to reduce that foreignness or the strategy, uh, the target cult, target uh, text zone, ka American English, hua, and they try to bring it more to the target cultural values. So as a result, wo jo translate ho ke text samne aayega, Pakistani story hogi ya Indian story hogi, but when it is translated there, in that according to what Minuti Singh, the element of domestication translate the way it will be translated, that you will see that it will be more like depicting more of cultural values of America, of the target language. And uh, it will be almost like you will say that the translator would leave the writer alone, the writer is left behind and is moving more towards it. The reader of that text is it would be something to that particular effect, the way it is presented, it will be more an embodiment of the target text values and the target text culture, usko reflect karenge in that text. Okay, you got it. Uh, you know, and this is, uh, the, uh, hold on, I want to go uh, to the, uh, this, first of all, uh, 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 let me come back to domestication again. This entails translating in a transparent point visible in order to minimize the foreignness, okay. I'm sorry, I missed this, uh, this slide. Uh, let me stop again. Vinuti in, discusses invisibility hand in hand with two types of translating strategy, domestication and foreignization. These strategies concern both the choice of the text to translate and the translation method. So Vinuti sees domestication as the dominating American, uh, you know, translation culture in which he bemoans particular this phenomena in which they're trying to domesticate. By domestication means 
that they try to reduce. It's an effort on their part to reduce the element of foreign tax, um, uh, you know, usme target cultures values ko reduce kar rahe hai, as I gave you the example of Pakistani short story to be translated or Indian short story to be translated. So usme jo element when it will be translated uh, into um, in, in America, according to the Anglo-American culture, they will tr try to reduce the specific cultural values of the source text, Pakistani text, Indian text, or isna present karenge. This if this entails translating. They will be will be style in you know uh, the home aim is the, the the translation the finished product would be presented in such a manner. Usme koi element of foreignness ka nahi ho. I'm sorry, ye foreigners nahi hai. This is the word from the word foreignness. Ki usme element of uh, you know uh, foreignness. Uh, uh, you know, any particular element, a uh, strange element, uh, something new, is it, un, you know, not familiar with, uh, you know, so this element, they would like to minimize that element, because for them, the translator's job is to essay translate kare, that the source text is also becomes like it's a, it's a, uh, it's just a story, it's a written in, uh, you know, America, or it's an, it's a reflection of the target culture values, and not much of the host culture or the target or the source culture ko minimize karte hain. the whole policy is the whole invisible style of translating in this according to domestication is ki aap usko jo, <coughs> excuse me the source usko, uh, minimize kare. okay let's move on to the next and give me one minute <coughs> Excuse me, throat is so dry. Let me have some water. Okay. So now you can see visible uh, domestication. So domestication it further covers adherence to domestic literary canon. Another aspect with domestication does it that it literally, it, it brings closer because you see each literature has, it's judged or gauged by its own standard, which we talk as a, a benchmark or a standard. So same is the case with literature, the way it is evaluated, you know, how would you classify that this particular literature or this creative writing, the A class, or the B class, or C class, this is done according to literary canon, the judgment, the selection. It has to be selected according to that. And they let, try to lend themselves to such a translation strategy. So accordingly, since that this domestic literary canons as well has to be seen that uh, sometimes the literary canon, this institution in, in uh, you know, that also kind of decides uh, for itself that whether this, uh, this has to be accepted it has to be seen, is it adhering, is it close to the translation, you know, to the actual target text or target culture, say close, uh, will be accepted as a translation strategy. Then we move on to the next, uh, and that is foreignization. Now, foreignization, on the other hand, entails choosing a foreign text and developing a translation method along with <clears throat> a long line along lines which are excluded by dominant cultural values in the target culture. So foreignization, on the other hand, this basically entails, uh, you know, you're choosing a foreign text and developing a translation method along lines which are excluded. Now, uh, as I said, that these are the two terms used by Benuti, domestication and foreignization. The term foreignization, he says that it entails that you have selected a foreign text. Now, just imagine that foreign text here entails uh, in terms of a foreign text to USA in the foreign, them as foreign text would be just example of a Pakistani text or an Indian text. And if it has to be uh, translated or if you have to develop a translation method along the li lines which are excluded by dominant cultural values in the target language, it is described as a translation strategy where the translator leaves the writer alone as much as possible. And then, so foreignization as there would be that you are uh, developing a particular strategy along lines which you want to uh, exclude the dominant culture in which the translator is basically not pushed, uh, you know, as the way it was in the domestication, 
that the, the prostrator is given a kind of a free hand and is not push that has to be loyal to the dominant culture dominant culture values is it means the cultures of the the country where it will be translated the target text culture so they are not the translation method or the translator is not pushed to to translate in such a manner in the target you know which should be more close to the target cultural values in the target language this is described as a translation strategy with the translator leaves the writer alone as much as possible and moves on so in this uh, you know policy as i said it is being not the translator is not being pushed ke aap 100% translation essay kare that you translate it into the uh, your aim is just to make very close to the target culture or as i gave you the example of target culture of usa where it will book look up here they are talking about that they are not pushing the translator the target the translator has given this uh, you know freedom that you can exclude the the dominant cultural values of the target and you just just uh, doing this translation and with, with not this perspective that you have to translate in a version close to the uh, should i say the target uh, to the target culture so the foreignizing method of translating a strategy when it be called resistancy is a non fluent or a stranging translation style designed to make visible the presence of translator by highlighting the foreign identity of the source text and protecting it from the ideological dominance of the target culture so foreignization means that according to minuti this is a strategy that in which the translator is trying to offer some resistance the translator is not willing to change each and every aspect of source text into target uh, into the tar for you know confining to make it acceptable to the target uh, audience or target culture and he is not you know he he is kind of adopting a policy of resistance to offer resistance that whatever he is translating it's not a it's, it's you know is not trying to take away in a this strategy in which the presence of the translator that is it is not there you know the foreign identity of the source text he tries to kind of visibly make highlight uska sara aim hai to highlight the element of foreignness uh, in the text which was translated usko foreign identity keh rahe to source text hai jisko translate kiya jana hai usko bishak retain kare indian text ho gaya pakistani text ho gaya aur any other text jisko publish hona hai usa mein to so they can be that element can be retained by the translator the element of foreign identity of the source text and also uh, that translator will protect it from the ideological dominance aur usko he is not pushed ki usne ideological dominance of target culture ke andar aake usne ideology bhi change karni hai aur pura pura aisa text ko translate karna hai ki you know from it becomes like something new as compared from the source text it will become so totally different as compared from the source text to the target text okay now let me give a uh, here this example maybe things will be clear to you you must have seen it sometimes yourself aap log movies dekhte hain many times it happens ke you have seen a particular movie it was actually it's a movie is based on a book or a novel okay maybe novel bhi koi indian writer ka hoga a kitab likhi gayi and may and may it is presented in the form of a, say we have i think um, if i'm not wrong mohsin hamid's book um, the reluctant fundamentalist has been made into a movie in india acha us movie ko agar english mein kitab likhi gayi hai it has been translated uh, obviously in hindi and it's a hindi uh, film jo banayi gayi when you as in this position you have read the novel yourself and when you look at the film you will say okay oh oh maybe this book of this director hasn't done a good job isne to it's not close isne to jab translate kiya isme usme to ye theme thi wo highlight hui thi in the in this movie version this has been lacking oh oh i didn't like i didn't enjoy it's no good maza nahi aaya usko jaise koi element very important aspect usko highlight nahi kiya gaya usko change kar diya gaya and so on so this is what it means this was i just give you an example which you with which you are more familiar ki aap kuch kuch books padhte ho novels padhte ho jinki movies ban jati hain and when you look at the movies you as a as, as a you know as at this level again as well as intelligent you know could i say audience you can uh, you know can 
कम अप विद योर ओन जजमेंट आप इंटरप्रेट कर सकते हैं आप क्रिटिक कर सकते हो कि ये जो इस किताब से तो बहुत ही फ़र्क स्टोरी इतनी चेंज कर दी कि ये तो मज़ा ही नहीं आया ये तो टोटली नया एस्पेक्ट ले आया और इफ़ यू फील इट इज़ बेटर देन ऑल्सो यूल बी एबल टू सो कमिंग बैक टू दिस आइडिया ऑफ फॉरनाइजेशन इज फिर वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्रांसलेशन इन मूवीज और समथिंग वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो दैट द ट्रांसलेटर ऑफरिंग सम रजिस्टेंस जब उसको ट्रांसलेट करने के लिए कोई बुक दी जाए तो वो वो इस चीज़ पे रजिस्ट करेगा कि आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज एज इट इज स्ट्रेंजिंग एवरी थिंग यू नो आई वुड लाइक टू मेक स्टिल विजिबल द यू नो द एक तो ट्रांसलेटर का विजिबल होना चाहिए ट्रांसलेटर है और ट्रांसलेटर शुड ऑल्सो भी नोइंग कि वो जो एलिमेंट ऑफ फॉरन कल्चर आइडेंटिटी विच एग्जिस्टेड इन द सोर्स टेक से लाइक ए पाकिस्तानी नावल और इंडियन वो उसको उसको ट्रांसपोज करे ट्रांसलेशन के थ्रू उसको ये बाइंडिंग ना दी जाए कि आपने आइडियोलॉजिकल डोमिनेंस वो सब चीज़ें आपने तो बस टारगेट कल्चर के तरीके से पेश करना है एज इट इज़ और ये लगे कि ये किताब जो आपने ट्रांसलेट की है अमेरिकन इंग्लिश में ये तो ऐसे ही है सवाए पाकिस्तानी या इंडियन नाम के बाकी तो कहानी और स्टोरी और लैंग्वेज सब कुछ लग रहे हैं द कल्चर इज़ ऑल्सो यू नो पटेनिंग टू द वेस्ट और यू एस सी तो दिस इज़ वॉट इट मीन दैट वेन एज ट्रांसलेटर यू ट्रांसलेटिंग because vinuti and the other translators who basically focused on this particular aspect jisko wo aap culture ka naam le rahe hain they are basically cultural theorists for them the translators job is of immense in terms of when they are transposing translating ki us culture ko bhi wo samne rakhte hain jisko present jisko translate kar rahe hain story to bhale se unhone translate ki story ki short story le pe but they have to keep in how how ka far as culture theorists like minuti what should be the agenda how to keep that you know that this balance between the ideological dominance of the target culture hona chahiye or they feel still the source text and its culture should be clearly visible in the translation okay so when you think and prove the terms will change meaning across time and location what does not change however is the domestication and foreignization deal with the question how, how much a translation assimilates a form He says that over the years, these terms, these meanings, they come across time, change, location. Sub change ho jati hai, but what doesn't change, however, is that these terms of domestication, foreignization, because they actually deal with the question of how much a translation assimilates a foreign text. Because this whole debate is when we talk about domestication, foreignization, that how much they are going to assimilate a foreign culture, which को trans जो translation के लिए आया है, जो किताब you know uh, people in america and the uh, the publishing houses in america for them pakistani text or indian text jo likhenge urdu hindi mein foreign text hain so when they have to translate that should they you know in talks of foreign text to the translating language jo target language or culture jo america ki hai how much it should rather signal the difference between should the translator's job should be ke wo wo is cheez ko highlight kare ke how the target like text culture is different than the uh, sorry the source text culture is different than the target text culture okay and so on aur kya wo difference ko reduce kare ya difference ko badhaye ya difference ko show kare should the translator uh, you know a cultural translator or a cultural theorist what should be his job either to assimilate the foreign text usko translate kare and present as if their culture of the foreign text and the uh, target text is the same culture or should it be other way around that they should signal the difference between both okay so this is what minuti's contribution was and i hope these two terms domestication and foreignization they are clear to you because these are very very important uh, terms in terms of what uh, was minuti's contribution to in terms of translation studies and in terms to uh, like other cultural theorists what he talked about so um, now um, the, it's like the end of today's lecture uh, it's just if anything is not clear you can ask me questions one by one because i want you that you should be clear about these two terms domestication and foreignization because when we talk about vinoti to ye do terms aapko aapke tips pe hone chahiye finger tips pe unko 